Welcome to Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Vicki and today I'm here to share how I made this bed frame from upcycled materials. Let's get started. I recently got a new mattress and box spring, but when I got it in place on the old metal bed frame, it was too tall. I needed something lower. Steph had recently gotten a new bed, so we decided to use the wood from her old box spring as a base and use some old shelving to make a new shorter bed frame. Here Steph is starting to deconstruct the first box spring. The first step is to rip off all the textiles to remove the metal spring part. The metal is attached with wire staples and must be pried out or cut before the spring can be removed from the wood frame. This Ryobi cordless bolt cutter makes this part really easy. For stubborn staples, a variety of upholstery tools helps to pry them out. I didn't want to have to individually remove all these fabric puffs, so I burned them away with a butane torch, which was super fun. I also deconstructed my old box spring, and here you can see the Ryobi bolt cutter in action. So here's what I'll be using. The newly stripped box spring and a bunch of shelving someone had thrown out that we picked up curbside. I wanted to add additional support to the queen size box spring and found the wood in another deconstructed box spring would be the perfect size. A Dremel saw max made this easy. All of these spaces were different sizes, so all of the wood had to be individually cut. Once cut, I glued and brad nailed them into place. In retrospect, I should have placed these so they hung a little bit over the edge instead of them placing flush with the existing box spring, to give just a bit more space for the bed to fit. To make the sides, I decided to use pocket holes to connect the shelving pieces to each other. For the two corners, I made bevel cuts on the miter saw. And yes, I was very excited to make my first bevel cut successfully. It's very scary, but I did it. <laughs> To assemble the corners, they were glued and brad nailed. This Rockler clamp it clip and a bit of T-Rex tape helped to keep the corners aligned and in place while it dried. I added these corner blocks, which I brad nailed into place, but when we put the bed back together, we realized they were in the way. Something with a lower profile, like a metal L bracket, would have been much better. With the two corners in place, I laid everything out and measured where the shelving needed to be cut for the front piece. I did the same for the sides and cut the pieces on the miter saw. I made additional pocket holes to the newly cut pieces. Time to assemble with pocket hole screws with the help of a large clamp. Once all the sides were connected, I filled all the cracks with wood fill. Might not have been clear before, but the shelves had this little overhang on them which I decided to keep rather than taking it off. So what you're seeing is really the underside of the original shelf, which is now the outside of the bed frame. Once primed, it was time to attach the base to the bed frame, which we did with the bed frame upside down. With lots of wood glue, clamps, and brad nails, we were able to attach the base to the bed frame sides. The hairpin legs were screwed into each of the four corners. bed frame was then painted black. To finish the painting, we moved the bed frame right side up onto our workbench tables. Once that was dry, we took the shortest route to my bedroom through the backyard into the back door and lowered it into place. Moan of truth, is a bed going to fit? It was a tight fit and there might have been a bit of creaking as we put the box spring in place. Now on to making up the rest of the bed and trying it out. The bed frame turned out exactly how I envisioned it. It is the perfect height and the look that I wanted. What we learned. I learned it should have measured. I did not take into account the, that the box spring actually has a wood frame that was the same exact measurements as a frame that I used in the base of the platform. It worked, but I'm not sure if it's gonna last because I really could have made it a quarter to a half an inch wider all the way around. But so far so good. I did my laid on it, it did creak. So we'll see what happens. And the other thing was I put in some blocking on the corners to help them stay in place. And that blocking actually got in the way when we tried to put that box spring down in there. 
Again, it worked, but we'll see. If you like this video, be sure to like, share all those things, and if you want to give a financial donation, you can hit that super thanks button. And as always, you can subscribe to us, our newsletter at motherdaughterprojects.com. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Oh, good. It didn't creak. There was a little creak, but that might have been your knee. Oh, well, it could have been. Yes, easily. <laughs> Actually, it's not bad. It's very sturdy. Jump around. I'm not going to jump around on it. No.